today yeah good morning good morning today we are having a, a case discussion on a case of hydronephrosis uh which is supposed to be present by dr ishita laha who is a third year sir and sir i'll present sir you will present okay fine yes, yes, i see but still presenting uh she will present the case of hydronephrosis with us today will be dr uh, debangshu sarkar who is professor of urology at ipjm ssk hospital so ishita you can share your screen and present Uh, uh, is it visible? Not yet. So yes. now. Yes. 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 Okay. Good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone present here. I uh, present the case. I am myself, Dr. Ishita Lah from uh, Ramkrishna Mission, Shiva Pradeshan. Um, Mr. X, a 45-year-old gentleman, uh, present, uh, a resident of Kolkata, engineer by profession, presented with a pain in the right loin for 10 months and swelling over the right loin for eight months. Uh, in history of present il uh, illness goes as follows: There is a gradual onset of dull aching pain over the right loin region. For about ten months, and there is a radiation of pain towards the groin, no asso not associated with fever and no aggravating factors, and often relieved with the passage of urine or analgesics. The patient noticed a lump over the right loin region for eight months now. The lump has been gradually increasing in size from two into two centimeter to about just six into six centimeter uh, size. And there is no history of rapid increase in the swelling, no history of diminution in the size of swelling with the passage of urine, and no history of hematuria or no history of any lower urinary tract symptoms. No history of increased frequency of micturition or any burning micturition is associated. No history of uh, anorexia and weight loss. In past medical history, uh, is uh, no history of any hypertension or diabetic mellitus or any other systemic illness no uh, and no significant past surgical history sleep bowel bladder appetite are all normal he is a non smoker and non alcoholic no history of any exposure to tuberculosis he is a married and a father of two children he has no uh, history of any allergy to any known substance or food no similar history in the family i summarize my uh, Uh, I summarize as follows: A 45-year-old uh, gentleman, non-hypertensive, non-diabetic male, presented with a pain in the right loin for 10 months and no aggravating factors associated, and often relieved with the passage of urine or analgesics, and swelling at the right loin region for about eight months, which has gradually increased from two into two centimeter to about the six into six centimeter size, and not associated with any other symptoms. Sir, may I proceed? Now wait. We have discussion on the history part. Dr. Sharkar, I think he has some audio issues. Okay, Ishita, uh, if I start the uh, questioning, uh, go back to your history, history of present illness. Yeah, uh, you see, uh, you have mentioned about pain and the lump. Uh, yeah. What is important at the beginning is don't get biased with a particular renal lump. He is presenting with the lump and the pain, so we, one cannot conclude at the beginning that this is a kidney disease. Okay, so you should uh, think of the possibilities when patient can have pain and the lump in the region of this abdomen, and go into each of the negative history to exclude other diseases. Okay, and more so. You said that uh, he noticed a lump two by two centimeter. You understand? Two by two is a very small lump. It is difficult for the patient, particularly for the abdominal lump, to appreciate when the lump is two by two centimeter. Okay, so you have to make a, a real life scenario when the patient exactly presents. So it is unlikely that patient can detect an intra-abdominal lump, which is two by two centimeter. And uh, you have mentioned that. Can we initiate that... it as a fullness? Felt in the yes. uh, region yes. and then, uh, which has gradually yes. increased to the present size. Yes, yes, because it's a two centimeter lump is very difficult. Even a clinician cannot detect. Okay. And and next is, 
uh, apart from taking into the uh, urinary symptoms, you should ask about other things. Like it can be chronic mass. Okay. It can be a, a, a small gut mass. It can be a pancreatic mass. Because mm -hmm. the left, which side you say? The right. Right side. Right yes. side. Right side, yes. As so you should keep in mind all these possibilities. Mm -hmm. So you have to ask. The best thing is to go through each of these uh, systemic symptoms. Uh, at the beginning, I cannot infer that this lump is benign. This may be a malignant lump also. So mm -hmm. in that case, I need to know about whether he has got any symptom suggestive of distant metastasis. Okay, so better thing would be you cover the systemic symptoms along with this. Don't get biased with a, a particular renal lump at the beginning. Okay, Dr. Sarkar, can you hear us? Uh, sir, uh, Amshu um, has disconnected. Oh, so he's here. He's here. Okay, he's here. Sir. Uh, okay. He's here. Uh, Dr. Sarkar, any any other question in the history presentation? Okay. Proceed for examination. Uh, general, on general survey, the patient is alert, conscious, and cooperative, oriented to time, place, and person, with a Karnofsky status of about 90. Uh, BMI is of 21. He has his decubitus of choice, well-hydrated patient. Uh, there is no evidence of pallor, jaundice, clubbing, sinusis, pedal edema, or engorged neck veins, or generalized lymphadenopathy, or any uh, prominent supra left supraclavicular node. No scratch marks over the skin. And vital signs goes as follows. Pulse of 78 beats per minute in the right radial artery, regular rhythm with normal volume. Blood pressure of 110 upon 70 millimeters of mercury in the right arm supine position. Respiratory rate of 15 per minute with a temperature of 36.8 degrees Celsius. On abdominal examination, symmetry of the abdominal shape and contour are intact, but a presence of a visible swelling in the right lumbar region is noted. Umbilicus is inverted and central in position. There is no scar, pigmentation, engorged vein, or arterial pers uh, pulsation, or any peristaltic wave seen over the swelling. All quadrants are moving equal with respiration, and one approximately six into six globular swelling is visible in the right lumbar region, extending up to the umbilicus, whose surface seems to be regular, and upper, lower, medial, and lateral borders are well visible, moving slightly with respiration and with a normal skin overlying the mass. The right plank appears full and the right renal angle fullness present with, in the sitting posture and hernial orifices are intact and genitalia appears normal. I corroborated my inspectory findings <clears throat> uh, as follows with no localized uh, rise of temperature and mild tenderness noted over the right renal point. The right kidney is palpable over the right lumbar region which is reniform in shape 16 to 6 centimeter in dimension. <laughs> dimensions moving up and down with respiration. There is a slight mobility of the swelling from side to side and from above downward. The medial, lateral, upper and lower margin of the swelling <coughs> is palpable and rounded. The surface is smooth and consistency is tense. Uh, the uh, surface is smooth and consistency is tense and cystic. The hand can be insinuated between the swelling and the right costal margin. It is an intra-abdominal 
uh, it is an intra-abdominal or retroperitoneal swelling with a shift test negative. The lump is bimanually palpable and, uh, but, sorry, the lump is not bimanually palpable, but balotable. The renal angle appears non-tender. There is no hepatosplenomegaly and no other abdominal lump palpable. Urinary bladder is non-palpable in a voided position and genitalia is normal. On percussion, there is a dull note. Uh, uh, there is a dull note on percussion over the lump, and rest of the abdominal to uh, abdominal uh, abdominal examination, the note is tympanic. The renal angle percussion is uh, appears to be a dull note. Upper border of liver dullness is there, and a uh, right fifth intercostal space, and the liver span is about twelve centimeter. There is no evidence of any free fluid in the abdomen. The bowel sounds on auscultation are normal and there is no bruit heard over the swelling. On parietal examination appears normal and no prostatomegaly is present. Other systemic examinations are essentially normal. I summarize my case as follows. A 45-year-old non-hypertensive, non-diabetic male presented with a pain at the right loin for about 10 months and no no aggravating factors and often relieved with the passage of urine or analgesic and a swelling at the right loin region for about eight months, which has gradually increased to about the present size of 16 to 6 centimeter size with no other associated symptoms. On physical examination, general survey is essentially normal. On local examination, symmetry of the abdomen is maintained. Right renal angle is full. On palpation, there is a rise of temperature, <coughs> though mild tenderness persists. A swelling of about the size 16 to 6 cm, reniform intra-abdominal retroperitoneal swelling, palpable in the right lumbar region, moving up and down with respiration. There is a slight mobility of the swelling from side to side and from above downwards and the medial, lateral, upper and lower margin of the swelling is palpable and rounded. The surface is smooth and consistency is tense and cystic. The hand can be insinuated between the swelling and the right postal margin. The lump is not bimanually palpable but balotable. Renal angle is non-tender. There is no hepatosplenomegaly or no other abdominal lump palpable. Urinary bladder is non-palpable and genitalia is normal. On percussion, the swelling is dull and <clears throat> uh, on percussion, the swelling felt dull and no free fluid in the abdomen is present and other systemic examination is normal. I provisionally diagnose my case as a 45-year-old non-diabetic, non-hypertensive, non-smoker male uh, presented with a right renal lump, likely to be benign in etiology. Thank you, sir. Okay. Dr. Sarkar, please. Sir, your diagnosis is lump. One point in your history does not go almost uh, all the margins of renal lump. Uh, sir, margins of renal lump? Uh, upper margin of renal lump is palpable. Uh, sir, I could not get the question. Upper margin of renal lump, is it palpable? Are you asking that? Yes. Sir, uh, yes, sir. Uh, I could deal with that. Upper margin of renal lump? First, I could do low down on it. Say the upper margin is palpable, the whole diagnosis changes. Uh, one thing in your history is Sir, is not audible. Yeah. Am I audible now? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not of mine. Not the upper border, not the upper border. It's still, I, I can see the, all the borders. Upper border, left border, upper border, lower border. <laughs> Anything else in the, um, uh, the actually actually uh, when she has summarized, I think summary is more exhaustive because once you have inferred that in the 
uh, examination is the kidney mass. In summary, you can straight away go. In summary, I've written a lot of things to say it is a kidney mass. You see, this exhaustive summary is not required. You have said in the examination, it's like kidney mass. So in the summary also, you say the right kidney is palpable, enlarged, which is having a tense cystic feel, and these margins are palpable. So you do not start saying that the retroperitoneal mass, sheep test, everything comes as per the uh, norms of a kidney mass. So make it a little brief. Okay. If you are feeling that is a tense cystic mass, patient does not have hematuria, you say it's a benign etiology. What you can uh, give a more probable diagnosis about this? Sir, uh, from uh, renal mass, uh, which we come across in our daily life, uh, the differential diagnosis goes as hydronephrosis or uh, uh, or renal cell carcinoma or a polycystic kidney uh, disease. But sir, um, in view of my case, sir, it is uh, there is no hematuria associated and there is no uh, other uh, symptoms of uh, pallor or um, any, and the age is also not corroborative. So I have ruled out uh, renal cell carcinoma from that. And sir, uh, and since the patient is not hypertensive, also, so I have ruled, uh, and the lob uh, feel of the lump is not lobulated, so I have ruled out the polycystic kidney disease. Okay. Other than renal lump, anything? Uh, uh, please, can you repeat the question, sir? I could not get it. Anything else? Because you don't have any significance of any radical symptoms. Uh, sir, your audio is not very clear. Could you please get the mic closer? Uh, we can't hear you properly. Anything else other than the renal lump? Uh, in that position, sir, uh, there can be, sir, um, any uh, mass uh, in the ascending colon, sir, or uh, or a retroperitoneal mass. So, uh, in exam, don't say renal lump. It can be very well a retroperitoneal mass. Only in retroperitoneal mass, the upper border is palpable very clearly. Your first diagnosis is a uh, hydronephrosis of the right kidney, am I right? Yes, yes, sir. So how can you say it's a hydronephrosis of the right kidney? So the, what are the points in your biopsy? Not a RCP. Sir, uh, firstly, the age is not corroborative. It is a younger male. And sir, uh, there is no history of any hematuria associated. There is no history of... Uh, um, And there is no history of fever, sir. And uh, uh, no history of any metastatic symptoms or any paraneoplastic symptoms. So, other than pain, you do not have any history of any malignancy and any toxicity. Sir, uh, just can you please repeat, sir? Sorry, sir. Uh, Firstly, the patient does not have any hematuria or signs of advanced disease on palpation. One of the diagnosis, differential diagnosis we hold is polycystic. What are the points in favor and against a polycystic disease? Uh, in my case, sir, uh, the points in favor, uh, it is a younger uh, male and sir, it is a tense cystic swelling um, and there is no associated hematuria. These are in points in favor, but points against so there is no associated any uh, hypertension and uh, liver appears are normal without any cystic pill, without any cystic. You're asked in exam, what's the point? Hematuria may or may not be there in polycystic. Involves all the kidneys. 
may or may not calculate it is calculated to the opposite side. Finding does not have any timing. Original failure on examination does not have any opposite side. And multiple locations. No case, this is very smooth. Uh, sir, anything else you want to ask? Uh, can I come in? Uh, you are not audible, sir. Okay. Uh, so your audio is not connected. Uh, am I audible now? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 what are the points in uh, favor or against tuberculosis mass in this patient? Uh, in uh, sir, <clears throat> in retroperitoneal uh, mass, sir, uh, it will not it uh, it will not move with respiration as from examination. And if a lump is uh, palpable, sir, uh, it has to be big enough to be palpable. Not a six into six centimeter size is palpable in the retroperitoneum, and the patient will have uh, uh, heaviness in the abdomen. Will complain of uh, heaviness in the abdomen and and. Uh, I think see, in a in a patient who is not obese, you can feel a six centimeter lump. That is not a uh, point. You can feel it, and and it may be a situation that. Patient has no other symptoms other than only the lump. Okay. Uh, okay. Then uh, how do you how do you proceed? Yes, Dr. How, do, how you do you proceed? Uh, sir, first of all, I will like to go for ultrasonography of the lump, sir, and then uh, after delineating the origin of the lump, and uh, then I will proceed with the uh, intravenous urography. Uh, do you have the urology? Pardon, sir. You have the ultrasonography plates with you? No, no, sir. I'm sorry, sir. So, what do you expect? Diagnosis is ultrasonography. Sir, uh, I will, uh, sir, the lump or the mass of origin, I will uh, be able to delineate from the ultrasonography. And, sir, if it is from the kidney, sir, the uh, renal cortex, uh, corticomedullary differentiation can be appreciated. And if there is any calculus, uh, the responsible for the uh, the pathology behind the cause of hydronephrosis can be delineated if it is a calculus in the uh, pelvic calicial system or the ureter. Um, and the other kidney is also said, uh, can be means, uh, identified if it has got any underlying abnormality. Yes, how do you diagnose a hydronephrotic Sir, uh, there is a cross dilatation of the pelvic alicial system, and if, and if it is uh, long standing, there may be associated hydroureter as well. And uh, renal uh, uh, renal parenchyma will be thinned out. So you see a dilatation of the pelvic alicial system along with its effects. That effect can be if it is a very long standing cross hydronephrosis. And if, if you, have, you have to look whether this is a pure hydronephrosis or this is a hydroureter nephrosis, this is your whole diagnosis changes depending on the dilatation of the ureter. So, how do you differentiate on ultrasonography between a hydronephrotic kidney and a polycystic kidney? Uh, sir, hydronephrotic kidney, uh, sir, it is a gross single. Uh, cystic swelling and uh, whereas a polycystic kidney will have multiple swellings in the kidney uh, bilateral involvement may be there uh, there may be more than two swellings in uh, either of the kidneys or if it is involving a single kidney then there will be more than three swellings in case of polycystic uh, kidney and uh, in case of hydronephrosis uh, so there will be a single uh, 10 cystic swelling what happens in hydronephrosis? There is dilatation of the pelvic alicial system. You will yes, get a dilated pelvis along with dilated uh, calyces. And with the corticomedullary differentiation will be there. That's it. 
will get a dilated pelvis, will get dilated calicious, and this pelvis and calicious is interconnected. That is the most important thing. In polycystic kidney disease, you will get a non-dilated pelvis. That is one differentiating point. Multiple cysts of varying sizes, and you cannot find any communication between the specific yes. spaces in the pelvis. That is the most important point. It's very easy to say. It's difficult to see what the sonologist do, uh, does is. They try to see the communication between the dilated calicus or cyst. It's difficult to see calicus in the pelvis. That is the most difficult. You cannot find any communication. Okay. Okay. So diagnosis is a hydronephrotic kidney. The ureter is not dilated. So what is your suspicion in this case? Forty-five years male with diagnosed ultrasound diagnosed hydronephrotic. What do you think the etiology behind this? Sir, uh, there may be, um, sir, there may be some uh, pelvic calicial system. Uh, sir, there may be a block in the lumen, or there may be a block in the wall, or there may be some other uh, obstruction from the external source. So, if it is a, a block in the lumen, there may be a cal uh, calyx or uh, in the cal uh, calicial part, or uh, there may be any. Think, uh, of some, think of some conditions. You said. Patient has got a pain in the uh, loin, and then that pain is related to the groin area. So, if the patient has got such history of pain, what you can suspect? Sir, uh, it can be sir um, uh, any calyx, sir. And since uh, any calyx in the uh, renal uh, in the kidney, or sir, sir calculus. Yes, yes. I mean, sir, calculus. Sorry, sir, calculus. Okay. And sir, it can uh, also uh, be from the. Uh, from any stenting done in the ureter in the past? No, no, uh, there is no history of stenting. Don't come. Bring the possibility. Don't get confused. Exam, <laughs> tell what is the most probable cause. If I were a male patient, of right line to right line, you do ultrasonography, you find a hydrosis. What is the most important pathology? The most common pathology is a calculus, sir. Yes. Uh, Sir, in the um, renal calyx, sir. Only calyx uh, stone will not cause this. Why does the stone lodges? Sir, in the constriction of the ureter. Your diagnosis is a ureteric stone. Right-sided hydrotonic. Diagnosis? Yes, yes, sir. Ureteric stone, 6 months or 8 months or 10 months, causing a hydronic. Uh, pardon, sir. Just can you please repeat, sir? Ureteric uh, no. stone yeah. of six months causing a hydronephrotic that to palpable is there. Okay. Find the palpable one. Ureteric stone should not be a primary diagnosis. It should be either a huge obstruction, it can be a malignant to the pelvis or the upper ureter, or it can be a cystic artery. Normally, does not cause a huge dilatation of the Before that, the patient goes to the doctor. Yes, that. Dull ache leaving a hydronephrotic kidney. That should not be first. Then, in this case, I think it's a uh, hypothetical case. You get a history of uh, loin to groin that is going against the PUG of the What is your opinion in this case? Uh, uh, opinion in this case regarding the history and examination is not going. A, these are all hypothetical history. Now she has made a history mimicking that this might be a stone disease. But in real life scenario, we may have a patient who has got the lump only, uh, or maybe a, just a darling pain in the uh, loin area because of the uh, distinction. So if it is not a classic <laughs> renal colic. Or ureteric colic. <laughs> what do you think is the second possibility here, apart from the calculus? Sir, uh, there may be, sir, uh, as sir rightly pointed out, sir, uh, PUG obstruction, sir. Yes, one is a PUG obstruction. Then what else? And sir, transitional cell uh, carcinoma of the ureter. Ureter. Or, or it can be renal pelvis also. 
uh, yes sir uh, it can be in the wall of renal uh, pelvis also and in our, in our country tuberculosis come in all different diagnoses sir uh, but tuberculosis will not present with uh, it is generally atrophic kidney not always audio dr shakar audio uh, but the history is not can you tell me what is not Not will be associated with any uh, with exposure of uh, tuberculosis, sir. And second, uh, from the history, and second, sir, uh, uh, there is no history of any hematuria, and there is no history of any uh, fever associated. That means constitutional yeah. symptoms. Yes, sir. And sir, no history of any eluteus either. ियंटी So, if a middle-aged man comes with this lump without any history of frequency agency hematuria, yes, it can be tuberculosis, but it, it should come uh, on a later later sequence. Yeah. Okay. So, concentrate on fusion obstruction. Take so, so, uh, <coughs> this is the case of fusion obstruction from your history and examination. You try the fusion obstruction. Next word. Uh, sir, uh, then I will uh, like to do one intravenous. urography sir or now, sir now in pg exam you cannot say ivu there are better investigations sir uh, then we'll go for uh, dtps scan sir uh, diethylene no, trimethyl no no, no 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 you have not done a good structural delineation you have done a sonography dtps is for assessing the functional, functional status functional status what, uh, sir, what for next sir uh, cct sir uh, if the udf creatinine is normal then we will go for a uh, contrast enhanced ct scan Main. Sir, of the uh, means uh, kidney ureter and pelvis, uh, pelvis sir. Oh, sir, I do a urinary examination. That I would like to have a contrast in that. Have a good anatomical delineation. Of what is the originating structure and what is the abnormality? Yes, what sir. And the cause of obstruction, uh, sir. Uh, The level of obstruction and uh, along with the uh, cortical medullary differentiation, the cortical thickness. So skip IVU. Don't say IVU at the exam now. Okay. IVU is not the standard of care now. Okay. Okay, sir. You are telling uh, frequently about the cortical medullary differentiation. That is not something very important in surgical cases. Cortical medullary differentiation and echo is important in patients who are suspecting any medical renal diseases. Okay. Whatever what happens is echo increases and cortical medullary loss. What you are trying to say, I think, is the cortical thickness no, is different. Okay. okay. Don't say CMD. If you are interested, that I will look for the cortical thickness. Okay. What are the things you should particularly look for in a patient in this patient in CT CT KUB? For interest, sir. Uh. The size, uh, size of the uh, kidney and the exact point of obstruction, sir. Size of kidney. What else? Just confined to the kidney. Size of kidney. And sir, and uh, the exact uh, uh, site of obstruction, sir. Yes. Next. Uh, and sir, the other kidney. Um, This kidney, the lot of thing can come from a CT because you have done a contrast CT. Uh, sir. It assesses the, the kidney function. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, sir. Function, functional status also. Uh, sir, the washout time means uh, the uh, excretion phase, sir. What about the status of pelvic ureter system? What about the cortical thickness? The cortical thickness also can be delineated, sir. Yes. So, C C C T is a very good investigation, which can give you the exact delineation of the. Disease and the normal normal kidney also. Yes, sir. Site of obstruction, status of pelvic ureter system. 
and you can localize the site of obstruction clearly. Okay, so you have done a CCT in this patient, and the findings are it's a 14 centimeter thickness. The uh, thickness is good. There is hydronephrosis, there is an abrupt cut up at the UJ level. It is visible, but there's, radiologically, there is abrupt cut up. What is the diagnosis of this patient? Uh, sir, there may be, sir, uh, there may be, sir, any, uh, it is, it may be a result of some uh, operative intervention, sir. Patient is in front of you. You have taken the history of examining. Right? We assume there may be, maybe. This patient. this patient has no surgical history. Uh, so then, uh, abrupt cutoff can be due to, sir, uh, any. Uh, Sir, any carcinoma, uh, sir? Why carcinoma? Think of benign. You said benign. What happens in EP sir, obstruction? Sir, uh, such stricture, sir. Um, what happens in huge obstruction? Sir, uh, in huge obstruction, sir, there will be a huge dilatation of the pelvic seal system, sir. And uh, the there will be upper, upper peristaltic zone. In the pelvis. Yes. So what happens? There is no structure in primary pelvis. It's not a structure. Basically, to the adenosine segment, the water from water propulsion and even propulsion from uh, pelvis to the ureter. So if you do a CT or any any radiological investigation, you find the abrupt and we find a normal injection of Okay. Versus what you are telling in a stricture. Stricture is most of the cases it can be because of post uh, operative or because of hemoglobin or secondary stone pack. There will be also an uh, abrupt narrowing. Difference is if you want to pass in diagonal or the uh, can don't pass. This obstruction, there is no stricture. Basically, a dynamic statement, functional obstruction is not an anatomical obstruction. Okay. Okay. So, on CT, your diagnosis is your obstruction, you have ruled out any stone disease, you have ruled out any malignancy or not. What next? Uh, sir, next I will, uh, I will like to delineate the functional status of the kidney, sir. Uh, in order to plan my management, uh, I will... Uh, uh, sir, I'll go for a DTPS scan, sir. What is scanning? Sir, uh, a radio labeled uh, substance, technetium antinine, is injected. Uh, and then, sir, uh, we see for the uh, perfusion phase and the excretion phase. And uh, if and we check for the glomerular filtration rate. What do you expect in this patient? Sir, so I expect a borderline uh, glomerular, uh, glomerular filtration rate in this. Sir. What is the main aim? What are the aims of doing a TTP? Sir, um, main aim, sir, uh, is to diagnose the uh, means to uh, delineate the exact site of the stricture and or to uh, delineate any underlying pathology and treat that pathology. Oh, it cannot give a it given give exact diagnosis. It can give you a, a differential renal function can be assessed by putting the plot. You can make a, uh, a differential uh, functioning of each each kidney. Uh, okay, sir. How? Idea, uh, sir. The idea of doing DPA in any patient who has first you have to prove or we have to prove some. that uh, the other kidney is functioning enough. We have to prove that this patient's kidney is obstructed. Many patients will find hydronephrosis, but if you do a DTP enogram, the kidneys are training very well. There is no obstruction. There is non obstructive hydronephrosis. We have to prove that this is obstructed by doing a DTPA. And second thing is, what is the functional reserve of this patient? Of this kidney secondary to obstruction. Third is you need to know the function of the uh, of the kidney. 
first do diagnose abstraction second do know the residual function of this kidney and you know the function of the opposite How do you know this kidney is obstructed? Do you know anything about the curves of DTP? Uh, sir, uh, it will uh, usually it peaks, sir, with the perfusion phase, and then uh, slowly, sir, it means. Uh, sir, uh, are they supposed to know the different curves of DTP or not? Huh? In this basic concept, it should the little part they should know. Sir. Uh, so there is a uh, as sir the dye is given, uh, it is taken up by the kidney, sir. Yes. Uh, there is a steep steep peak, and then uh, with time, sir, uh, uh, the DTP is not absorbed, so it is completely excreted. So we see for the excretion phase, and uh, and the curve goes down. And the curve goes down, sir. Yes. Not only DTP, it's a diuretic uh, DTP. You are diuretic, mostly pusinate uh, is given, and you yes. see the what is the percentage of washout from each kidneys, and depending on the percentage, a curve is generated. Okay, one, two, three, four, there are four types of curves. It is like two curves, that means normally what happens, it goes up and comes down. It is like two, it goes up and up and up. This is a clear cut obstruction. It may not be, uh, you are not expected. And say, so if find that type two curve, it is okay. And at the same time, I look for the function of the kidney and function of the opposite kidney. That helps in management also. Management and follow up. Do a final class. Follow up up to the patient that this was the function and now this is the function. That is the fourth important thing. When it's true obstruction, was the function of the kidney, was the function of the opposite kidney, and this will be helpful. So this patient has a GFR of 40, right side 60 and left side, and right side obstructed. What is your plan now? Uh, sir, uh, I will uh, like to go for a dismembered uh, Anderson Heinz pyloplasty, either, uh, either by laparoscopic or open method. Can you tell me the principle of Anderson Heinz pyloplasty? Um, so uh, we first uh, we we first uh, uh, means uh, means we separate uh, the pelvic calicial system with the ureter, and then sir uh, we uh, make a new pelvic calicial system after uh, taking out the means. Don't uh, make a new uh, pelvic calicial system. Pelvic calicial system is there. The obstruction, the PG obstruction, junction. So what do you do? So we take, uh, sir, um, from the uh, kidney, sir, we take out the obstruction, means we uh, divide it and we uh, eliminate the, sir, bulge and then, sir, we, uh, means we attach the ureter with the... Uh, Where is obstruction? Where is obstruction? Sir, in the pelvic calicial ureter junction. Pelvic calicial is higher up. You say pelvic and ureter junction. Okay, So sir. what do you need to have? excise that? Excise that segment. Yes, yes. sir. It excise that segment and excise the pelvic calcium system as a whole. Okay, okay, okay sir. Uh, pelvic uh, ureteric junction uh, part, yes. sir. We excise that and attach the ureter to the pelvis, sir. You know the principles of uh, surgery? Sir, uh, yes, yes, you have some principles of large button astronomy. Or uh, some few principles of Anderson and Pelican. I'm sorry, sir, I'm not being able to recollect it right now. Actually, uh, first thing is that the dependent anastomosis. What happens if this is the pelvis, this is the ureter, and this is the obstruction site? That is not an anatomical obstruction. Not propagating the PCS peristalsis of the ureter in dynamic segment. So you have to excise that segment. And after that, you have to anastomose this pelvis with the ureter. Okay. And while doing this, you have to keep in mind that the dependent 
an astromosis. The new pelvis, pelvic junction has to be defended. Otherwise, if it is high up and irritated is here, it will not drain. It has to be uh, dependent. It has to be funnel shaped. The ureter, sir. The proximal the, end of the ureter. The junction should be funnel shaped. Okay. And uh, it has to be water type anastomosis. May or may not be. Dismembered, second is dependent, third is funnel shaped, fourth is water tight, and if you have a very hugely dilated pelvis, you have to reduct use it to use the pelvis. Otherwise, if you find a very dilated pelvis, the um, contraction property of the people. Fifth principle is you may or may not uh, add. Uh, reduction of the pelvis it is this five things you have to do. Uh, sir, anything else in operative? Uh, uh, no, uh, what are the indications for nephrectomy in uh, hydronephrosis? Um, sir, if the glomerul, uh, if the filtration status or if the residual uh, filtration status after doing an IVU is found to be less than 10 ml per minute, then we go for an effect. No, IVU will not decide. Uh, I mean, it's a DTPS, sir. sorry. The DTPS, after DTPS scan still, is the... Still then, still then, if the opposite yeah. kidney is also not there, you'll still do a nephrectomy? Uh, then we will go for a nephron sparing uh, nephrectomy, sir. Nephrectomy. So, you have a piece of obstruction leading to a poorly functioning kidney. The victim is, if the function... Relative opposite kidney is normal and the relative function is less than 10 percent. Or in adults, it is 15 percent. In pediatric cases, it is 10 percent. Or the GFR is less than 10, it's better to take, the, take out the kidney. It's the opposite kidney. Yes. The opposite kidney is even not normal. Yes. Depending on the situation, you can even do a pilocarcine. The long term results are not good. Exam, you say, the differential function. 10 percent is the equation of the absolute GFR is 10 ml per minute. I will advocate a effect in this case. Okay. Nephron sparing surgery is a different thing. It is done in all RCT where you only remove the kidney along with the margin of it, remove the tumor in the margin. The nephron sparing. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Shukumar Maiti is also there. Any question, Dr. Maiti? No, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Saha and Professor Sarkar. Discussion is going on very nicely. But audio problem is today is a... Yes, it's audio problem. And uh, one thing, uh, Isita, regarding yes, the causes, I think uh, Dr. Devangsu may agree that the uh, common non-malignant and non calculus cause is the dysfunctional pelvic disorder. Yeah. And also in pediatric patient, we get lots of cases of uh, hydronephrosis due to that disorder at that segment. Yeah. And uh, Dr. Devangsu, will you please highlight, highlight is there any scope of uh, uh, your cystoscopic management or placement of stent through that uh, junction with a poorly functioning kidney with infection and hydronephrosis. Is there any scope of uh, temporary uh, placement of a stent through the uh, junction in, in the presence of infected urinary hydronephrosis? Where we are going to salvage the kidney with hydronephrosis, good cortical thickness. This is uh, many times we we'll get patients who has a history of uh, infected hydronephrosis and comes with a DTPA with hand who has a very poor function, 10%. We we'll say that the, at that time of infection, this DTPA is fallacious. What we do is we put a stent in these patients. It serves two purpose. One is it uh, uh, it. Uh, it is a one form of treatment of infected hydronephrosis and second is uh, after this infection is over we again do a DTPA and see whether this DTPA which is showing a poorly function at the time of infection 
is actual or not. Most of the cases you see after stenting and after the infection is cleared, the function increases. Yes, definitely there is a role of uh, stenting in case of infected cases only. Otherwise, if you can pull out if there is no infection and the function is poor, uh, generally the uh, result of the um, DDP is uh, reflective. Another point Dr. Professor Saha has kind, he rightly sure. pointed Isita regarding your presentation, uh, you should not be biased about the renal lump. And another thing I also like to point yes. regarding the shape, the renal shape, reniform shape is al almost never maintained until and unless it is a renal type of hydronephrosis. Only yes. when, when it is confined within the renal calyces, then the renal shape will be maintained. The most common type of hydronephrosis is the pelvic calicial hydronephrosis where the pelvis enlarges more than the uh, calicial system. Yeah, shape may not be so any form shape will not be maintained. You, you said that it is any form shape. Uh, I would not agree uh, because the shape you should not mention and as the any form. Yeah. Okay, okay sir. True. Sir, okay. I have a question, sir. Yes, yes, please. Sir, uh, in case of the pyonephrosis, uh, sir, uh, only stenting can be done or nephrostomy tube placement also has a role? By definition, pyonephrosis is infected hydronephrosis with loss of renal function. Okay. What we do is we usually try with the stenting. If there is no thick pus, stenting helps. Sometimes even if the stenting stent gets locked or if there is a thick pus, the stent may not drain. In this case, yes. Uh, that should not be the first case. Shall I make a comment here, Dibansu and Dr. Professor Saha? Yes, yes, please. Isita, uh, Isita, your question is very good in the sense because uh, you will not get Dibansu and other urologists uh, in your in every places in the country. When you are working at the periphery, when the patient is having pyonephrosis with all the three triads, that is uh, anemia, uh, the pain, lump and the... Uh, so then in that case, when the situation is worsening, then nephrostomy is the choice because you have no expertise to place the stent. Okay. So nephrostomy is still uh, in vogue, particularly in the peripheral areas where the uh, service of the good urologist is not available. In, in fact, now nephrostomy can be done by ultrasound guidance also. And also, also remember Isita, uh, in uh, fetal surgery, when the patient is, when the fetus is having a hydronephrosis, when the kidney is gradually deteriorating, you can also place a nephrostomy stent from the kidney outside into the amniotic cavity by placing the stent so that you can salvage the kidney. The baby will born with good cortical thickness. So that is a procedure uh, for nephrostomy which is obtained. Um, uh, nowadays, we place uh, percutaneous nephrostomy under EVG guidance. That is one of the modalities of treating this infected hydronephrosis. Mm -hmm. You can say percutaneous nephrostomy. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sharkar. Thank you, Ishita, for good presentation. But you always try to modify the presentation. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank, thank you. you sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir, sir, one question, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, sir, what is the advantage of uh, CT over uh, IVU? Uh, you see, uh, uh, CT over IVU is, uh, if you do only IVU and you think the patient, this patient has got a non-functioning kidney, you see nothing on that side. And even you see a, a uh, poorly functioning kidney with the dilatory pelvic system, you have no idea about the uh, renal outline, the cortical thickness. CT gives you a comprehensive picture. One is you can show you the functional status in the form you can see the pelvic system or not. You can see the outline of the kidney, extent of the enlargement, and you can exactly have an idea about the cortical thickness by measuring with the Hounsfield unit. So CT is standard of care. I view now even in the book. In fact, I am editing my book. I am deleting that part of the writing that I view part. I am just deleting. Another question, uh, Professor Saha and to the yeah. Devaksu. So sometimes I am also confused to write whether the 
contrast CT or non contrast CT will be advised for the renal calculus disease or urinary calculus disease. What should be written externally, non contrast CT or contrast CT? It is sufficient, uh, but if you think it's a renal stone or it can be anything other than it can be a stone or other disease also, in those cases it's better to see. Better to see? Contrast or non-contrast? The clear cut case of erotic stone, NCCT is enough. NCCT, non-contrast, non yes. But if you think it can be stone also, anything else also, sometimes an elderly patient comes with uh, history of suggestive urotary colic. We are not sure if it's a stone, it can be a TCC also, it's better to do a CCT. CCT. So in case of hydronephrosis with calculus, always CCT? No, 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 NCCT. No, with hydronephrosis, calculus with hydronephrosis. To study yes, the sir. function, uh, for the studying function, the contrast is must. Without contrast, we cannot study the function. Patient comes with history of urotary colic. You do ultrasonography, you find a hydro ureter or nephrosis, but you do not find any stone. Mm -hmm. okay. so you have to take the call with this patient. It's a long history with a history of hematuria, go for a CCT. But it's an acute, acute history, two, three days history. You think it's a urotary colic, you can do a NCCT also. Now, my, my another question is whether uh, non contrast CT is any way better than contrast CT for serving any good purpose for small, small calculus or not. If it is not, then why you are not opt for contrast CT in all the cases? Just to uh, not to subject the patient to contrast because many patients... Yeah, the contrast, a... contrast, the complication with contrast is minimum. But no, almost, no, almost all CT scan nowadays from head to foot. Uh, usually contrast is so commonly used and it, it is tested by the uh, skin test. Uh, so it is always, uh, safety is always uh, taken, uh, measured before the contrast is injected. So why not uh, contrast? Because many a times it is advised non-contrast CT. Yes. I am just uh, surprised whether I will write the non-contrast or contrast? So this, far, was, this was stone disease basically. Basically for stone disease you can see the stone exactly. Where is the stone? What is the extent of the uh, obstruction? Once, once you have studied the stone is there, you must study the function. If you do not advise IVU, then how you can study the function of the kidney? If you interfere the kidney in any way or ureter, you must study the kidney function. So if you do not advise IVU, why you will not opt for the contrast city? Understand my question, Makhullah. Yes, so, yes, if yes. you do not advocate IVU, then without contrast, how you can approach for surgery, intervention, the kidney or ureter? Function, please. <coughs> Sir, acute ureteric colic or acute ureteric stone does not lead to But what happens is, in most of the patients, if you do a ureteric ureteric patient has uh, acute ureteric colic with infection, find a threaten of 1.5, 1.4, just borderline risk. If you do an unnecessary contrast study in this patient, not the allergy which you are scared of, we are scared of the nutritional function. The patient is infected, patient is obstructed, the patient is dehydrated. On top of it, we are doing contrast study and many patients will find a increase in creatinine after 2.5. Again, it comes down maybe after surgery. that is one issue. Second issue is acute urinary colic or pain or obstruction does not lead to permanent damage to the kidney. So even if I do a non-contrast study without knowing the function of the kidney, if I find that good sickness or my treatment will be just to do a URS and look for the function. Yeah, and more so you can assess the uh, kidney thickness in in, in a plain city also. You can have an idea about the cortical uh, thickness of the kidney, uh, you can see the pelvic system, you find the whole kidney is thinned out. Uh, the whole thing is pelvic system and is a uh, papery kidney. Then you can think, yes, it might be a, uh, then you go for DTP scan. Yes, sir. So, uh, kidney, uh, plain city can give an idea about the uh, kidney outline and the cortical thickness, the uh, middle area also. So, that's why 
the most of the urologists are asking for NCCT for one there is a Crohn's disease. But if you suspect a malignant disease or other cause of obstruction, yes, contrast it is a standard of care. Yes, sir, sir, most of the cases, uh, uh, by seeing the cortical thickness, you can have some idea. Even if the patient has 10% function, yeah. the erotic stone, the urologist will treat the erotic stone only. They will not take out the kidney. Yeah. Because that is a simple operation with the erotic stone. Let the patient be there with 10% function. That is the main idea of not doing a surgery. If time uh, permits, uh, Makhullar, can I ask one question to Dr. Dibangsu because uh, we are yes, not... Yes, 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 yes. Uh, <laughs> the question is, uh, most of the time, uh, what do you find? Most of the time, uh, in case of uh, ultrasound finding, uh, in ultrasound finding, there is renal calculus, small renal calculus. So, uh, but on straight x-ray or contrast CT, it is not a calculus, not proved to be a calculus. In how many percentage of cases, the ultrasound finding is not corroborating with reality regarding the presence of calculus in the renal calculus, in, in the renal calyces. What is your opinion? In how many percentage of cases, the ultrasound finding regarding the presence of calculus in the calyces is not corroborating with the reality? Audio, audio, audio. I cannot tell you the exact percentage, but yes, we do get patients who has uh, who has a reported stone in calyces or kidney, and we do a CT scan, we do not get it. This is mostly done by sonologists, not by radiologists, because picking up a small stone is very difficult. On the cement, there are many artifacts, particularly angiomyelipoma or any renal spark or cortical calcification, which can mimic a renal stone in ultrasonography. And if you do a CT scan, the diagnosis will be clear. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sagar. Thank you, Ishita. Huh? Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.